As short-term rental hosts, it's important to do your very best to create a memorable experience for each and every guest. Whether you're taking bookings from Airbnb or Verbo or direct bookings from your website, there are certain things that you should do and avoid doing to ensure that your guests have a comfortable and enjoyable experience from that very first inquiry all the way through checkout. Most new hosts are very eager to make sure they're doing everything right. But since most of us getting started with short-term rentals don't have previous hospitality experience, we can all, we have all made some serious blunders when we're first getting started. It can be tricky to know where to draw the line between being hospitality hospitable and being invasive or being smart property owners or being obsessive over house rules or between being discerning and being paranoid what's up guys i'm steven and i'm kylie and we are not trying to put ourselves on some pedestal and say that we have not fallen into any of these categories that we're about to talk about today in fact when we have really stressful days i think each of us do start falling into one of these categories that we'll tell you about yeah, if you stick through to the end, we will share what our fatal flaw category is for each of us, but also how we pull ourselves out of that rut or pull each other out of that rut when we see ourselves going down that path. The first one is don't be an untrusting host. Letting strangers into your property that you put your life savings into your down payment and setting it up, it's a stressful situation and we don't want to downplay that. And there are plenty of horror stories around about damage or guests who won't vacate. So we aren't going to pretend like every guest is a great guest. But over the past five years, we've hosted something like 5,000 groups of guests. And the percentage of guests that have caused any sort of damage to the property is minimal. Headaches, yes, but property damage, no. I can count on one hand the number of times uh, we've submitted a damage claim to one of the booking platforms for more than $500. Part of that is good screening, but there are ways to sort of screen your guests without coming across as untrusting. Yeah, you want your guests to feel welcome and excited about their stay, not like they have to sell themselves to you before arriving at your property. It's all about learning the right questions to ask and trusting your gut when something feels off, but within reason. Like a guest with no prior reviews doesn't automatically make them a bad guest that's going to come in and destroy your property. But it might mean that they need a little more educating, you know, subtle educating on the house rules and things like that. Most of the time, people with no reviews are just people who've never used Airbnb before. And with these people, you really have a unique opportunity to leave a lasting impression on them and hopefully they'll come back year after year. And maybe they'll even book directly next time. Then there's the autopilot host. This is a type of host that's kind of bought into the hype of being able to buy a bunch of properties, um, automate everything, and then sit on a beach somewhere and drink pina coladas. And this type of host is a little bit controversial because they probably can show you a whole slew of five-star reviews that they have on their property and all this you know, passive income that they've earned through Airbnb. But I guarantee that over time, putting their rentals on autopilot is gonna come back and bite them. The only way for a short-term rental to be 100% passive is to hire a full service property manager. Which costs money and eats into your profits. And it costs money because your short-term rental needs nurturing. It requires testing out different pricing strategies and using different keywords and watching what works and what doesn't and what your competitors are doing. And then just when you think everything is kind of working smoothly and you're in the groove, Airbnb will change the algorithm on you and you kind of have to start over. Should you find tools that help you optimize your short-term rental business and save you time and money? Absolutely. And we shared some of our favorites, our 2023 tech stack a couple weeks ago in a video. We'll link to that if you'd like to check it out. But fully putting your property on autopilot and automating guest messages, just don't be that host. You also don't want to be the Photoshop host. This is a type of host that really kind of oversells their property with photos to the point of being deceitful. Instead of doctoring up photos to make your property look so much better than it actually is, I'd rather you put that time and energy and focus into actually making your property a better place for your guests to stay, and that will naturally translate through the photos. We're really happy when a guest says that the property is everything they expected and more, which means we've done our job about fairly depicting the property. Looks even better than the photos is a compliment. We're not saying you shouldn't photograph your space in the best light, or that quality photos don't matter, but there's a reason we don't hire traditional real estate photographers to shoot short-term rentals. Typically, real estate photographers are shooting a home with the intention of getting potential buyers in the door. So you're often seeing wide angle shots, intense color grading, and other little photo editing tricks. Then it's up to that potential buyer to view the property, do their due diligence, and then decide if they're gonna make an offer on the property. But that's not the same transaction as a short-term rental booking. So when you hire a photographer, 
Look for someone who specializes in short-term rentals, look at their portfolio, or also someone who does kind of lifestyle photos. We found those to be good. With a lifestyle photographer, if they have experience shooting interiors, they can not only capture the space, you know, the bedrooms and the bathrooms, but they can also capture the feeling of the house. And that's really what you're trying to convey to your potential guests. Then there's the absentee host. And here's where I need to make my confession. <laughs> now, when, when we get really busy, this is kind of my fatal flaw. And this is where I can find myself falling into. Thankfully, this is not also Steven's fatal flaw. So he's usually there to pick up the slack when I get stressed and I'm just like, oh, can't, can't deal. The absentee host is the type that is either very slow in their guest responses or unresponsive totally. Communication is so important in this business and so are timely responses to inquiries and booking requests. And that's like a concrete fact. Your response times are a factor in your ranking on Airbnb and your super host status. Next up is the grumpy host. Nobody likes the grumpy host. One of the trickiest parts about guest messaging is that it's text-based messaging and it's sometimes easy for your text to be interpreted in a different way than you intend. A simple smiley face every once in a while goes a long way in adding sort of a more lighthearted and friendly nature to some text that might be a little bit difficult to send. Just keep the guest correspondence light and friendly and you'll be fine. And respectful. And respectful. You also don't want to be the creepy host, AKA Snoop Dogg. The Snoop Dogg thing started a couple years ago. Every time, usually me would notice something kind of weird going on in a property, we'd tell each other and then she'd send me this gif of Snoop Dogg like looking through a telescope, a periscope. Or... We don't spy on our guests. We don't want to, we don't have the time to do that, but we do look at the driveway cameras periodically or if we get a whole bunch of repeated motion triggers or if we get an alert from our noise monitors. Our cameras are mostly for operations to make sure guests have departed when they're supposed to, cleaners have arrived when they're supposed to. It's a way for us to just check up on that remotely. And they're also for security to make sure that there's not any severe occupancy violations or a party. So even if you are watching what's going on in a property, don't tell the guests like, hey, I saw on the camera that you did this and this. If we see something bad, usually what we'll say is like, oh, our neighbor called and they let us know that, you know, there was this going on. You seem like less of a creep that way. <laughs> Then there is the I can't be bothered host. You have anything to say about this one? <laughs> what are you talking about? This is my fatal flaw when I'm like super busy or stressed out. I just want guests to just leave me alone. So the I can't be bothered host is the type of host that just gets annoyed with every little question. And the problem with this is that, especially if you have a larger portfolio that you're looking after, like we are, one person asking one little question, you're getting a lot of these little questions throughout the day. And it can be hard to not compound all of those in to feeling like everyone's badgering you and then take it out on the poor guest who just, you know, asked you where the blender was. This can lead to, you know, short and direct responses and make the guest feel like a burden for asking you a simple question. If your guest has had an issue come up during their stay and taken the time to send you a message about it, just be polite and professional with your responses and try and be kind. And if there's a maintenance issue that's urgent, try and get someone over there same day if you can. This is why having a good relationship with handyman is super important or working on your own handyman skills. We did a video a couple months ago with common maintenance issues that come up in a short-term rental property. Check that out. Maybe you learned something. Maybe, you know, you're proactively checking on some things at your property. So unplanned maintenance is less likely. And the last type of bad host, at least for this video, is the disciplinarian host. This is a type of host that has way too many house rules and that is poised and ready to enforce them. And probably staring at their camera all day. House rules are important, don't get us wrong, but they need to be clear and concise and reasonable. This is especially important now that Airbnb has made your house rules front and center on your listing page. So keep those house rules short and sweet. If you find yourself kind of spiraling into one of these sort of bad host categories, maybe you're having a bad day or you have a very difficult guest that you're dealing with, try to remember that this is the hospitality business. And then sometimes you just kind of need to suck it up until that guest checks out. Thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next video.